cool guys and welcome back to Tiger Steve Tech. Ubuntu Kylin 20.04 is out, and it comes with a pretty nice desktop, but it also comes with some pretty rough edges. I'll get to why I think this isn't the distro for most people, but before that, let's talk about who this distro is for. I've read about Ubuntu Kylin, and I've tried out previous versions of this distro, and to me, what the developers were trying to do is pretty clear, and that's to create a Linux distribution for Chinese users that can replace Windows. That first element really stands out from the beginning. Other than the poorly translated UI, I mean in fact the software center is mostly in Chinese, there are some pretty Chinese software vibes to the software that ships with the OS. Take for example the Kylin Assistant. It's got a pretty nice system information panel and wow I did not know that my CPU could go to 8.3 GHz. Nice. And a system cleaner. Does this remind you of those Windows registry cleaners that break your PC? But at the same time there are some pretty cool applications like this file shredder which I think securely erases files. If it actually does that, that's neat. Besides that, there are also lots of obvious attempts to appeal at Windows users. Let's go back to that software store where there's a section labeled WinSub which I stand is for Windows Substitutes. Because on that page, there's a whole list of Windows software with Linux replacements. There's also a lot of proprietary software bundled with the installation, like WPS Office which is a Chinese Microsoft Office replacement, Foxit Reader, and there's more in the software store such as the 360 web browser. Like, come on. To be fair, most of the built-in applications are open source, and they come straight out of Mate, such as the terminal emulator. As a user of the Mate desktop, I found these applications pretty familiar. And this is no surprise, because Ubuntu Kylin's uh, desktop environment used to be built off of Mate. The minimal install doesn't look like it includes any proprietary software at all. The user interface is totally new, and it's really good. The taskbar, menu, file explorer, notification center, and controls have backgrounds characterized by Gaussian blur, at least on my machine. I've got a GTX 1050, by the way. There's a lot of attention to detail all around. When you drag a window, it turns semi-transparent, which is nice for many reasons. The file explorer does the same thing, but with Gaussian blur. By the way, that flashing in the recording didn't actually show up on screen. It's a product of OBS. And I think now will be a good time to transition into those rough edges that I mentioned earlier. OBS doesn't do this on the same hardware, on my standard Ubuntu 18.04 install or on Windows. So either it's a 20.04 issue with MVENC or it's the distro itself. And that's not to say that the desktop doesn't have random bugs as well, like this floating menu. The experience in general is pretty inconsistent, from discrepancies in application icons on different areas on the taskbar, to the mouse cursor changing from the default to the user set one, depending on which window it is over. And the reason why I will not recommend this distro to anyone, or at least this version of this distro, is because of the multi-monitor support. The GUI settings app does nothing to change the multi-monitor configuration. Every time I log off and back on again, my preferences just completely reset. Yeah, I know, I can just simply change the config file myself, and my problem will be solved. But if there's a GUI tool, it should at least work. So at this point, I've got a list of people who this distro is not for. It's not for people who care about open source, because this distro ships with proprietary software. It's not for people who care about multiple monitors, and definitely not for people who are worried about proprietary Chinese software. But let's consider again who the intended audience for this distro was. And that is Chinese users trying to get off of Windows. For many of those people, Ubuntu Kylin is enough. And if the development team is able to iron out some of those bugs by the next point release, I think they can definitely appeal to a wider audience. Until then, if you want something new, try out Fedora 32. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of Tiger Steve Tech.